Today we are deep cleaning this kitchen from top to bottom using the Go Clean Go Cleaning method from Instagram. So many of y'all sent me the Go Clean Go profile and I thank you for that because she is full of so many tips and tricks on how to efficiently and affordably clean your spaces. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that cleaning is not necessarily my favorite thing to do in the world. There's a lot of other things I would rather do. So if I can learn how to more efficiently clean using the Go Clean Go method, I am all for that. So let's get to it and get to cleaning up and see how this method pans out in my very real non-Instagram home. The first thing we are going to do here is just clear off the surfaces as much as possible. I have my handy dandy notepad here because I wanted to make sure I followed her step by step as accurately as possible. So now we are going to start from the left corner of the kitchen and work our way top to bottom cleaning and disinfecting. And the thing I mentioned before that I like about Go Clean Go is her method of cleaning is very affordable. What she advises to do to make the best disinfectant for your kitchen to wipe everything down is fill your sink with hot, hot water, as hot as the tap will go. Add just a teaspoon of powdered Tide laundry detergent and a tad of bleach to disinfect. She specifically says that don't use vinegar in your kitchen to disinfect, it doesn't do So I'm gonna start filling up my sink with the hottest water possible and then add the bleach and laundry detergent. There's specks of old crusty food in here, so since I'm going to be using this basin as our cleaning solution holder, I wanna get all the food out of here so I'm not rubbing down the counters with old food. Okay, I have my bleach here and my powdered Tide laundry detergent. She says just to add a teaspoon of the powder laundry detergent, but she doesn't specifically say how much bleach to add. She says just a tad, so I'm gonna take just a tad as just maybe, maybe just a capful. There we have it. I am putting on a glove and I am just using some old white rags. Because there's bleach in this, I don't wanna use my typical microfiber rags that are not plain white, just because I don't wanna damage them. Definitely don't wanna to have to rebuy anything and I already have plenty of these old dingy white rags. So all we gotta do then is get this wet. Then starting from the left corner of the kitchen, we're gonna wipe down the knobs and any just greasy fingerprints and marks that we see on here. And I'm not moving over this way quite yet because she wants us to work in sections and not get distracted by all that's going on in the kitchen. So we're staying on the left side right now, working from top to bottom on the disinfecting. She says not to forget this backsplash, which I honestly have probably never washed the backsplash, but top to bottom, that would be next. Then we're wiping off the counter here. Wow, there's so many crumbs on this right now. I'm just knocking it all onto the floor because we will clean the floor last. Doesn't matter if crumbs fall onto it. Continuing our way down on the left side. Now, as I wipe these cabinets down, you may see little white specks still. It may not look completely clean and really they are clean. It's just that these are really cheap not real wood cabinets, they're veneers, so they get scratched up really easily or dinged really easily, and when it gets dinged, the fake wood comes off and it's just white exposed underneath. So that's what those dots are. Continuing our top to bottom work, she also reminds us to clean the kick plate down here underneath the cabinets because whenever spills happen, a lot of the splash up ends up under here, and how many people are cleaning under here? I never have, if I'm being honest. So let's do that. There's a whole bunch of crud on the floor that needs to be vacuumed, but we are not to that yet. Let's get this kick plate clean. And I definitely see years of splashed up crud on this. Moving over towards the right, again, this next section, we're going from top to bottom again. And working our way down, next is this greasy hood vent. This hood vent? Definitely quite greasy. My finger is all disgusting now. <laughs> Go Clean Go actually recommends using Mr. Clean as a great degreaser for this area. After you degrease and let it dry, you then go back with the stainless steel polish. But I unfortunately do not have Mr. Clean in my house, but I do have these Scotch Bright Range degreaser wipes. So I'm sure any degreaser works to get the grease off. So we will use these. Oh, it's very greasy. 
We're gonna need another one of these. Now we will let this dry and at the very end, that's when she goes back in with the stainless steel polish. Next thing she recommends cleaning that I have definitely never cleaned is this grease trap thingy here. And fortunately, it's very simple to clean. It pops right out. There we go. Ooh, this is dirty. At least it's proof that I do cook sometimes. <laughs> fortunately, this is very easy to clean. She says you can just stick it in your dishwasher. So that is what I will do. And I'm actually going to set this on a quick cycle right now because when it's done, we are going to clean the dishwasher as well. Now we are not done with these degreaser wipes because tons of grease also splashes on the tile right behind the stove. And yeah, there's a lot of grease here. So we're going to use these degreaser wipes on this as well. I'll say, I definitely am realizing right now that I need to degrease my kitchen more. So I will be buying some of her recommended Mr. Clean so that I don't have to use these tiny dinky little wipes going forward. Cause there's so much grease on here, these are practically falling apart. Now it feels like the grease has at least come off that top part. Let's work our way down. We're doubling up. We're doing two this time. I need to look up some sort of hack on how to best clean your oven grills. I've seen tons of hacks on TikTok where you can stick your grills into your giant massive sink and just put in a dishwasher pod and then they magically become super clean. But I don't have any sink in my house that is large enough to hold these giant grills. You would need a massive farmhouse sink for that. And I do not have a massive farmhouse sink. I have a very traditional size two bucket little sink that will not hold any of these. So I cannot use any of those TikTok hacks. And here is my super disgusting messy grill top. From all the searching on her Instagram, I didn't see how she recommended to clean a grill that had gotten out of control like this. The one she specifically cleaned looked like it had already been cleaned. So I'm just gonna clean this the way I have found it's easiest to clean. First I just wipe away all of the massive crumbs. Then I'm getting my scrub daddy or scour daddy scrubber and I'm using it with my Scrub Daddy Power Paste to get all this hard to get off gunk. Oh, but one thing Go Clean Go recommended that I like is take off these knobs so that you can get all of the grease underneath of them easily. I love my Scrub Daddy Power Paste. Not sponsored by Scrub Daddy, but look it. Look how fast it got through that. This is only my second dip into the power paste. I'm gonna wipe it away with a clean towel. Look at how clean the Scrub Daddy and the Scrub Daddy power paste gets this. Now I'm not scrubbing around this too thoroughly because it's gonna be covered back up with this and I don't wanna mess around with anything here and break my favorite burner. All right, now we're just gonna wipe it away with this dry cloth. And we're gonna polish this up after two, but I'm just getting the power paste off. And I rinsed these quick, so I'm gonna put them back on. Okay, and I know she said to do the stainless steel at the end, but I am really enjoying this working in sections from left to right, so I'm gonna do the stainless steel right now. Now I know this has been broken forever because the little spindle thing is off. It's not, it's not that we just need to replace this. I've explained this in so many videos, but it's still freaking broken. It's honestly just one of those things I've realized at this point. I saw a prompt on TikTok that was like, what is something in your house that's just broken, but everyone has just chosen to live with? And this is the broken thing in our house that at this point, everyone has just chosen to live with. 
I asked for it to be replaced for Christmas, for my husband to take the time to fix it for Christmas. Didn't happen, so now it's going to be my birthday wish in a few months. All right. Beautiful. Let's continue to work this away. She also reminds everyone to get rid of the crumbs in your crumb trays. I'm for real, he's gonna move this, but actually I need to use the little grease wipes on this before I lift it and get my sweater all greased up. Section one done, moving towards the right. We're gonna work from top to bottom with our disinfectant solution in the sink, but let me show you the sink solution. Note, I did not use any of this sink solution on the stove or on the hood to degrease or anything. This water is just dirty from the cabinets and counter I previously wiped down. And look, it's so dirty. So much dirt was picked up from wiping that area down and the water isn't boiling hot anymore. So I'm going to empty it and refill it with hot water again. Once again, adding the teaspoon of chives and the dash of bleach. I grabbed fresh towels as well because the others were looking very dingy. The beauty of this granite here is because of the color, it covers up crumbs and crap all over quite easily. But look at all the crumbs just from that first little half. Oh no, I already made a mistake. I forgot to clean the cabinets underneath the stove. So this isn't 100% accurate, but let's, let's go back to cleaning up this area here. This definitely needs it because a lot of splash happens when I'm cooking. Obviously, a lot of splash happens when I'm cooking. You saw how disgustingly dirty my stove top was. Now we got the dirty old kick plate under this section that just like the previous section <laughs> looks really dirty because it's never been clean. Definitely looking forward to the vacuuming portion last because there's so much crud all over the floor. I'm wiping the stainless steel portion of the outside of the oven down. Oh, and you know what, actually I totally forgot. You're still supposed to wipe down the handles and stuff with the disinfectant, Tide laundry detergent, bleach mixture on everything before you polish because that is what is killing all the nasty, nasty food germs. So it's disinfected. I'm just going to keep going around the cabinets while this dries and then use the stainless steel polish. That's why she wants us to wait and do the polishing at the end because she doesn't want you to forget to disinfect. So we will come back to this and keep doing her method of disinfecting everything first. Next, I'm clearing everything off of the refrigerator so that I'm able to fully wipe that down and clearing off the coffee bar as well. Our fridge on the outside looks atrocious. I don't know, I'm gonna give you a close up in case you can't tell. Look at this scratch here. There's absolutely nothing we can do about this. My kids, I, I don't know what the hell happened here, but they somehow scratched the upper portion of our fridge. We always had scratches on the bottom of our fridge. They've been here forever because my kids played with magnets or would scratch their toys on this fridge. This admittedly was the cheapest fridge we could get at Lowe's five or six years ago. So it's definitely nowhere near scratch resistant, but when it was on the bottom, it wasn't as big of a deal because most people aren't all the way down here looking at your fridge. But then they got on a chair and put a bunch of scratches up here right at eye level and this bothers me to no end. But just to let you know, at the end, if the fridge still looks dirty, that's just all the scratches. First things first, we must disinfect the fridge with the solution from our sink, especially if you use it a lot, which we have actually been using our kitchen a lot lately. I used to have a really bad habit of getting takeout a lot, but we have drastically reduced the amount we get takeout. I'll still treat, treat us on a Friday night, but otherwise I'm making pretty much every single meal all the time. So I feel like I am always, I need to get this wet again. I feel like I am always and constantly cleaning the kitchen because it gets really dirty after every meal, especially dinner. 
Now the fridge, the coffee bar, and everything over here has been disinfected. So let's put everything that is chilling on the island so that it was out of the way back so that we can do the same process on the island. Next, we need to clear off the island area so that we can properly clean and wipe this area down. This water is already looking pretty used, but it should still be good for just the island and the cabinets on the island. Again, love the color of my granite because it covers up so much, but we have a giant curry spill right here from dinner last night. After I'm done with this, this is 1000% going to be the cleanest my kitchen has ever been. This is pretty much the last lower section here. We got a little minion. Probably can't even see what's going on over here, but these kick plates were just as dirty as the others. Look how freaking dirty this got. And this was the second refill. Could you even tell that this white rag was in here? This was very effective. I'm very impressed with this mixture. Everything looks so clean. Now I just have to put everything away. These pictures of my kids are getting so old, but they look so cute and teeny in them. I, I wanna keep them up. More pressing information right here, the poison help control number. I'm not gonna show all the information on here, obviously for, for privacy purposes, but this is our 911 slash emergency contacts list that, I mean, honestly, sadly, we don't have any babysitters right now in our life, but when we do, which I hope we are able to do soon, this is our emergency contact list so that if anything were to happen, they know who to call. All the first aid information right there available to see, and then we always have our emergency contact numbers for the family right underneath of it. Now let's polish up the stainless steel here. She, she uses the same brand, but it's not this specific one. Technically this one is a cleaner and polish. She, I believe, just uses the Wyman polish, but she says go heavy on it and then polish it up with a polishing cloth and wipe it with the grain of the stainless steel. And she even notes with this brand, and I know this to be true as well, it may look streaky at first, but within a few minutes, the streaks will go away and it will look beautiful. Probably won't look beautiful on my fridge since my fridge is full of scratches from my children, but on most fridges, it will look beautiful and pristine afterwards. Next, we are going to polish up the oven. Then I want the glass on here to look clean as well. The dishwasher is done. Let's, ooh, steamy, I don't want the camera to steam up. Let's revisit the grease trap that was up there. See if it is clean. I mean, it is definitely much cleaner than before, but the grease trap thing, I don't even know what this is called. I'm calling it a grease trap. The one that she cleaned on Instagram looked like it was already clean. So if you're doing this all the time, I'm sure putting it in the dishwasher would work. For me, it's better, but it's still disgusting. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think works best for getting the grease out of this? Right now, I think I'm just going to spray it down really well with my Dawn Power Wash and then see if that can work its magic for about 10 minutes to get out the extra grease. I just emptied the dishwasher so that I can do this, but the next area she cleaned was the dishwasher, which mine desperately needs to be cleaned. She said get a new towel, so that I have, and just get hot, hot water on it. Don't use any solution, and then just wipe down the inside of your dishwasher with the hot water. This area is always so gross so so gross 
In the past, I've used my power scrubber and that's pretty good at getting in the nook and cranny behind here that this rag just won't get. So let me pull that out in a second and show you. You can turn it on. And I've mainly used this to clean the grout in my bathrooms. It makes it super easy to clean the grout, but per Go Clean Go, we're still just going to use the hot water here. And then I'm just going to get out the gunk that gets stuck in this crack behind here. Look at all that that I would have missed if I only used a rag. So yeah, it looked like it was clean, but it was by no means clean underneath the hard to get crack. So let's wipe that up now. Thank you, Power Scrubber. I'm sure you could use just a toothbrush too, but the Power Scrubber makes it go so fast. Now she also mentioned cleaning out the filter here. I actually somewhat recently cl cleared out the filter and it's really hard in my specific dishwasher to put it back. So I'm not trying to do that right now. I want to get this whole process, the whole deep clean of the kitchen done before I have to pick up my kids from preschool. So I'm just gonna wipe out all the food that hasn't entered the filter area underneath yet. And then we're going to finish up the dishwasher clean and move on. You're also supposed to clean up these side areas with just hot water. The last step to clean out your dishwasher is actually quite easy. You just put in a splash of bleach and then run it on the sanitize or hottest cycle. Next, let's check back in with the grease trap thing that goes over the stove fan. See how well the Dawn Power Wash worked. We're just gonna lightly scrub it, rinsing it with hot water. I mean, years of never have being washed had caught up to it. It's not 100% perfectly clean, but it's so much better than it was before, so I'm satisfied. Next, she says, for scrubbing out your sinks, you want to use a mixture of vinegar and dish soap. Now, previously in the video, I showed you the story where she specifically says that vinegar doesn't do shit in the kitchen, it won't kill germs, but she acknowledges that and says that the vinegar is specifically to get out any hard water stains. Now, I already have this little scrubber that is filled with vinegar and dish soap that I keep in my shower area, and maybe two times a month when I'm doing the deep conditioning of my hair, I'll scrub out my shower and make it look all clean again with this. So I just took this out and I'll use this to scrub the sinks with the dish soap and vinegar as she instructed. Now, now that I'm thinking about it, I didn't see any specific notes on her page on how to clean the sink. I easily could have missed it. She's had her page up for years. She has so much content up on it. But maybe, maybe the way you're supposed to clean the disposal is since I had this area filled with the bleach and Tide for wiping down the whole kitchen area, maybe when I was draining it, I was supposed to run the disposal because it would have had bleach and laundry detergent in the water. And maybe that's enough to clean it. But I, I didn't see how to specifically clean the disposal from her page. So I will not be doing that. I will just feel confident that all the bleach and laundry detergent that went down in the two cycles that I did was enough to clean out my disposal. And she did also say specifically to wipe out your sink after. And then in the story, she also said you can seal it with olive oil, but she was cleaning what looked like some black cement or some black stone sink. So I'm not sure if that was specifically just for if you have a stone sink, but you know what, I'll give it a try. If it looks terrible, I can just wash my sink again. I, I think I actually do like that. It does look really shiny and clean. Next, we got a vacuum. The floor looks disgusting. We already saw the area under the kick plate here is really gross. I've just been wiping crumbs onto the floor knowing that I'm gonna be vacuuming and let's get to vacuuming.
kitchen is already looking so much cleaner, but we're not quite done yet. We are working our way down, and now we are to mopping our floors. She uses the O Cedar Spin Mop to get her floors clean, and what does she use as the solution to clean her floors and get all the dirt up and off of it? Laundry detergent, once again. So I'm going to go get my O Cedar Spin Mop ready right now. I unfortunately don't have the dual O Cedar Spin Mop bucket. It's the one she uses. I will have the one she uses that I wish I had linked in the description below along with everything else that I mentioned in this video. But I'm going to go get my cheapy O Cedar Spin Mop with my additional bucket that I keep on the side for clean water. My little teaspoon of Tide. Dunking it in the clean water bucket that has the Tide. We're gonna spin it out here. And she always says you wanna spin it out really well because if it's really sopping wet, it'll leave streaks on your floor. And she also says to mop over areas twice. So I'm just gonna re-mop over the area again as I go. Wow, using the Tide Powder Laundry Detergent with the O Cedar Spin Mop proved to be very effective, and there we have it, a clean, disinfected kitchen using the Go Clean Go method of cleaning. The floors look good, the fridge looks actually pretty good, all things considered. Everything is fresh, clean, and disinfected, and ready to be made a mess again when I cook dinner tonight. What do you think of the go clean go method of cleaning your kitchen, going from left to right, using laundry detergent on the floors? I'd love to know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna keep hanging out, I have all kinds of videos on my channel, and those playlists should be floating over the screen at this point, so click on one of those and I will see you in the next video. Bye!